Hello and welcome to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg and I am here today to do a book haul revisit. If you're new here, this is where I look at January's past and see how many of the books I brought into my library in the month of January I have read, how many I have unhauled, how many I would still like to read, and start the process of thinking about how many I might be ready to unhaul. It's my way of holding myself accountable for the books that I purchased and trying to make myself a more intentional book purchaser. I like to think that I have learned a lot about myself as a reader as I have done this. Just a couple of footnotes before we get started. So I'm going to start with the most recent book haul, which obviously will be January of 2023. Now, obviously, we are in a new year. However, I did not do my very first book haul until March of 2019. So for this month and for February, we will still only have four years of prior book hauls to look at. Once we get to March, it's going to start getting a little bit difficult because suddenly we're going to have five. And I'm going to think about a way to make that an easy and not so time consuming process. But just a note, I will not be spending a lot of time talking about what these books are about. If you want information about what these books are about, check out the original book haul. It will be in the description box down below. I talk about what the book is about, read a little bit from the opening and all of that stuff in all of my book hauls. So feel free to check that out from the links down below. I am also removing books that were purchased for my Pulitzer Prize project. Anything that was by Sue Grafton, because I purchased them just so I could, you know, have the whole collection and display it on my shelf right there. And uh, I've also removed anything that was a gift. That makes a lot, well, not a lot, particularly the one from January 2023, a lot smaller. Because January 2023, Joel and I had just expanded the library to look like it does right now. So I went a little nuts. <laughs> I decided to have a Pulitzer Prize for Fiction section. You can't see it. It's over there. But I have a whole section for it. So I purchased a lot of books for my Pulitzer Prize project. I'm trying to read all of the Pulitzer Prize winners for fiction. So eliminating Pulitzer Prize project books really reduced the size of that book haul and makes it a lot easier to uh, get through for timing purposes. So I believe those are all the notes. <laughs> Let's get going. And again, when we look at January of 2023, once I removed all of the Pulitzer Prize Project books, we only had three. And one of them has already been unhauled, so I only have two here to hold up for you. The first one is The Deviant's War by Eric Cervini. I purchased this and the next one because Eric Cervini, who is the author of this and who was a Pulitzer Prize finalist for this book, subtitled The Homosexual versus the United States of America, started a bookstore of his own called Shop Queer, and they have a bus that they want to take around to different parts of the United States to sell queer books and help people in all areas of the country have access to queer stories and queer authors, which I love. So I purchased the two books that I still have from the store as part of that in, in order to support this endeavor that he has done. They are also sharing more of their profits with the authors than a traditional bookstore would do. And this is signed by Eric Cervini. It has that little plate on the inside. I have not gotten around to reading this. I fully admit that this is something that I would read on audio rather than the physical book. Joel did listen to the audio, found it fascinating, and I'm really looking forward to getting around to it at some point. I have not yet. But like I said, this was mostly just to support Eric Cervini's store, Shop Queer, and I'll get around to it at some point. The other one that I purchased from Shop Queer was We Are Not Broken by George M. Johnson. George M. Johnson is more famous for being the author of All Boys Aren't Blue, which is a fantastic book unfortunately, frequently banned or challenged in areas, and I would encourage you to check it out. I did read this one. I ended up listening to it on audio. The audio is read by George M. Johnson, and this is another signed book. So I read it. I will say I didn't like it as much as All Boys Aren't Blue, but I did like it, and I am glad that I read it. The one that I have gotten rid of is The White Bone by Barbara Gowdy. I had purchased this book because... It wasn't available on audio or through any of my subscription apps. And I was thinking about using it for a prompt for the Montana Book Company 2023 reading challenge, which was to read a book told from the perspective of an animal. 
the white elephant is told from the perspective of elephants in a group. Joel did track down an ebook of it and he attempted to read it and didn't finish. And based on his experience, I kind of decided, you know what, maybe this isn't a book for me either. And once I started questioning that, I decided, you know what, maybe I should just trade this in. So I did, and I got some credit for it instead, which I am always going to be fine with. So in 2023, once we took out all of the Pulitzer Prize books that I had purchased last year, we only had three books. I've only read one, and that was the George M. Johnson, and I have unhauled one as well. That was The White Bone, which I had not read. I could potentially think about maybe doing it on audio at some point. I think there is an audio out there. It just wasn't available to me. So, you know, but that is the state of January 2023. Let's move to January of 2022, which has four books. And again, I only have two of them in my possession at this time. The first book was The Membranes by Chi Tao Wei, translated by Ari Larissa Heinrich. So in January of 2022, Jen the Librarian and I were kicking off the LGBTQ plus in translation read along and The Membranes was the first selection for that. So I ordered it for it, I read it, and when I was doing a bit of an unhaul last year, I thought to myself, you know, I'm not going to reread this book. I did you know, I, I liked it enough. I'm glad that I read it, but I'm not going to reread it. And for that reason, maybe I should just think about trading it in. So I did. And there you go. The next one was actually the runner up for the inaugural LGBTQ plus in translation read along title, which is To the Friend Who Did Not Save My Life by Hervé Guibert. Translated, it does not say on the cover. Don't you hate that? Translated by... Wow, I'm, they're really making me dig for who the translator is. Oh, here it is on the back. Translated by Linda Coverdale. Put the translator on the cover. <laughs> so I did not read this one. I believe the people who did read the runner-up for the selection for January and February uh, had a bit of a mixed response to it. I'm still kind of interested in it, so I'm holding on to it, and maybe I'll get around to it at some point. When, I don't know, but I am still interested, so I'll keep holding on to it. Then, I got Still Life by Sarah Winman. Now, somehow I have still managed to not read a Sarah Winman book, even though she is one of the most consistently recommended authors that I get in comments uh, for both Still Life and for Tin Man, which I also have a copy of, but hauled in a different month. So sooner or later, I will get around to reading one of her books. I think I would prioritize Tin Man, but I don't know. So stay tuned. Maybe this will be the year that I finally finally get around to reading a Sarah Winman book. Beautiful, beautiful cover, by the way, which means nothing, but it is interesting. And then the final book from January of 2022 was Fiona and Jane by Jean Chen Ho. I have since unhauled it. I did not read it. I heard very mixed things about the book once it was released, and I admit once I started hearing mixed things about it, my sense of urgency to read the book pretty much flatlined, and that ultimately led me to think, you know what, I'm probably never going to get around to reading this, at least not anytime soon, so maybe I should just make a little bit of space on my shelf, and that's what I did. So again, there were four books from January of 2022. I read one, which was The Membranes, and I've unhauled two, Fiona and Jane and The Membranes, which I had already read. And I'm really happy with the two that I have. I, I think the one I'm most likely to read, if I were going to rank them, is Still Life. I don't know when I'm going to get around to, to The Friend Who Did Not Save My Life, again, especially since the reaction to it was a bit mixed in the group from the people who did read it. But for now, at least, I'm happy to continue having it in my library and think about have, reading it at some point. I will say, if at this point in January of 2025, if I'm around and doing a book haul revisit at that point, if I still have not read it, I might be starting to think about an unhaul. But still life is very safe, at least for the time being. So let's go back to January of 2021 as is pretty common with my book hauls, they get larger as you go back. Although, again, there's a definite 
asterisk on that because I purchased a lot of Pulitzer Prize books in January of 2023, and I've just removed them from consideration here. But generally speaking, my book hauls get larger as you go back in time because when I was newer on BookTube, I was a little more excited. And, you know, I again, I like to think I have learned more about my book purchasing habits since I've started doing book haul revisits. That's why I continue to do them. So this is where things start getting larger. The first book that I brought into my library in January of 2021 was The Prophet's by Robert Jones Jr. I loved this book. I know it was a bit of a cilantro book. There are definitely people who didn't respond to it as strongly as I did. I liked it a lot, and I had been kind of holding out hope that it would end up on some best of lists by the end of the year, or maybe end up in some awards contention. And that ultimately did not happen. But I'm really looking forward to what Robert Jones Jr. does next. And I did enjoy this book as much as you can enjoy a book that is as sad <laughs> and features abuse and some difficult topics like The Prophets. The next one is a graphic memoir called My Friend Dahmer, a graphic memoir by Durf Backdurf. So basically, I, I, actually, I was about to tell you what this book is about, and I'm not really going to be taking the time to do that here. But you can kind of guess from the title. Durf Backdurf actually went to high school with Jeffrey Dahmer. So this is a graphic memoir about looking back at the memories he has of it and how he learned about what happened with Jeffrey Dahmer later in life. It is an interesting book. I think this is the kind of true crime that I can engage with uh, in the way the world works right now because it really explores how Jeffrey Dahmer slipped through the cracks and how people didn't necessarily notice that there were some pretty deep problems already in high school. So it's a really interesting book from that perspective. I will say I have thought about whether or not I need to hold on to this book. It's interesting. I'm glad I read it. I don't know that it needs to take up a whole lot of space. So, I mean, it doesn't take up a whole lot of space, but I have a, my graphic novels and graphic memoir section, which is right there on my shelf. I only have one shelf, so there is a bit of limited space there. I think I've talked myself into this because I have a pile of books that I'm going to be taking into my local used bookstore tomorrow to see if they will trade them in, and I might add this to the pile. As much as I'm glad I read it and I found it interesting, I just don't really feel like I need to have it here, so I'm probably going to end up unhauling it for that reason. Then we have Born to be Posthumous, The Eccentric Life and Mysterious Genius of Edward Gorey by Mark Derry. I love the cover of this book. Now, what's funny is I purchased this book in hardcover because I was interested in it, and it just never had come out in paperback, and the audio wasn't available on any of my subscription apps. So I figured, you know what, I might as well just bite the bullet and purchase the hardcover. And then a couple of months later a paperback came out, and I think this is actually on Scribd as an audio now. And the audio is probably how I will do this book eventually. However, I'm totally fine holding on to this book. I have a minor fascination with Edward Gorey, and I just, again, love the cover of that book. So I'll get around to, to this at some point, and in the meantime, I'm fine letting it hang out on my shelf, even though I will probably do this on audio. I'm just curious and would like to get to, around to it at some point. So because it has, fits that little niche for me, I am willing to hold on to it. Then we have A Boy's Own Story by Edmund White, a classic queer novel that somehow I have managed to still, still <laughs> not read. I hadn't read it before 2021. And then I thought if I have a copy in the house, I will probably get around to reading it, and here we are, January of 2024, and I still haven't read it. Let's all cross our fingers that 2024 will be the year that I finally get around to reading A Boy's Own Story by Edmund White. It's a shoe in for my pile of possibilities for Pride Month. Since 2021, I have um, had some other priorities. Like, I think in 2021 was the year I prioritized Black queer authors and stories. So that was kind of how this one got pushed a little out of the way at that point. And then in the two years since, it just hasn't happened. So let's 
keep our fingers crossed that 2024 will be the year that I finally read an Edmund White book because I feel like there's just a gaping hole in my reading in within the queer community as long as I have not read one of his books. Then we have Cantoras by Carolina de Robertus, and this honestly is, is also starting to feel like a huge gaping hole in my reading because I cannot tell you how many times this book has been recommended to me since I purchased it, but even before. Uh, it was, I think it ended up on my radar because people had started talking about it in comments, and then in the years since, it has just come up a lot. So I really need to get around to reading Cantoras as well. And let's all hope that 2024 is the year that I finally get around to doing that. Because again, this is a book that has come up a lot and been recommended to me a lot. And I really, 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 <laughs> really, really would like to get to. It also has a really stunning and beautiful cover. Actually, yeah, I mean, the cover of A Boy's Own Story is pretty as well, but this, I would say, is just kind of stunning. So, I would like to read it. Let's all cross our fingers that 2024 is the year that crosses both of these off my to-do list, and I finally get around to them. The next one, I'm going to be a little careful how I hold it up, just because uh, there is booty on the cover, and I fear YouTube and the algorithm, because, long story short, uh, once a while ago, I got a copy, uh, not a copyright shirt, but a strike put on my channel for language in a video that I didn't even curse. So it was really easy to appeal the strike and have it taken away. But I live in fear of YouTube ever since. So I'm going to carefully cover this up. It's A Matter of Life and Sex by Oscar Moore. And if you or get yourself a copy, just know there there is booty and almost some frontal down in the part where my hands are. I have not gotten around to reading this book. Sean the Book Maniac had talked about this on his channel, and it sounded really interesting, so I looked online, found a used copy, and here it is. <laughs> I almost flipped <laughs> the cover to the front. Anyway, I would still be interested in reading it. I don't have any immediate plans to get around to it. This, to me, is sort of like a library builder. I just am interested in having it on my shelf, and maybe someday when I'm looking for something to read, I will get around to it. It is a very interesting sounding book. So I'll get to it at some point, I hope. <laughs> then we have another book that I had been inspired to order used because of Sean the Book Maniac. It's Safe as Houses by Alex Jeffers. And this is kind of the same scenario. I have seen it on my shelf and I've thought, you know, I should read that book. It sounded really interesting, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. But I will. This is totally library builder to me. I, I just like having it in my library. Maybe someday I will get around to it. I don't have immediate plans to do that. But maybe someday I will, just because it is here in my library. And then the final book from January of 2021 is something that I did on haul. It's The Removed by Brandon Hobson. I heard mixed things about it. I did hold on to the book until I think about a year ago. Finally, uh, last summer, I think is when I got rid of it, or maybe in that final crunch before we actually expanded the library. But I had I did hold on to it for a while, and toward the end, I just had to admit, you know, the, the mixed response to this book kind of killed any sense of drive that I have to read this. And I think it was available on audio, and I still have it saved on Scribd on audio. So I just thought to myself, why hold on to it? So the remove by Brandon Hobson is gone. So, in January of 2021, I brought eight books into my library, and I have read two. Those two are The Prophets and My Friend Dahmer. And I'm really hoping that by the end of this year, I will have at least two more A Boy's Own Story and Cantoras on that list. I have only unhauled one, and that was The Remove by Brandon Hobson, but I, the more I'm thinking about it, I, I'm probably going to unhaul My Friend Dahmer as well. So, it hasn't happened yet. Officially, there's only one, but there could very well be two at this point next year. Let's go to January of 2020, which is another big old book haul. <laughs> the first one is something I don't have in my library. I expelled it from the house very quickly after I finished it. It's American Dirt by Janine Cummins. I did not like that book. You can gather that I did read it. I w it was in a group that I was assigned to read for the BookTube Prize, and I did not like it. Thankfully, it did not advance that round, and I got it out of my house. I did not want it here anymore. So I read it. It was a success story for that, 
but it's gone. I just didn't want it here anymore. We also have The Big Goodbye, Chinatown and the Last Years of Hollywood. I'm not in a huge crunch for space in the nonfiction section, which is also behind me. But, so here's the thing. I know I'm much more likely to read this book on audio. And I think it is on Scribd. So if I were to have a crunch for space in nonfiction, I probably would let this one go. Because it's not like there are photos in this book that make it feel like it's essential. I'm just double checking and flipping through. And yeah, there's not a single photo. Oh, wait. Hey, maybe at the chapter breaks. I think I just saw one. Of course, now I can't find it again. <laughs> but even then, probably not enough to make me feel like I need to hold on to the book. Yeah. So it looks like there are photos at the chapter breaks, but that that's kind of it. So there's nothing really about the book itself that I would need to have or that makes it feel like I'm getting additional content than I would get on the audio. There aren't even like footnotes or anything like that. Yeah, that's... The, oh, here we go. So it's only at the parts that there are photos. So if I were to have a crunch for space, I probably would let this one go but I'm not having a crunch for space right now, so it's fine holding out. I do like the visually striking cover of this book. So, and if you follow along, you know I am fascinated by old Hollywood, and Chinatown is a movie that I need to revisit because I haven't watched it in like 20 years, and I should rewatch it. So this would be a fun companion to a rewatch if and when I do. And then there's Real Life by Brandon Taylor, which I have read and which I liked. Um, didn't love it. I admit... Because I didn't love it, I have thought about unhauling it. But I'm still interested in Brandon Taylor's other books that he has published since real life. So it has stayed on my shelf. There is a scenario out there someday where I would have gotten rid of this in order to either get credit so I can bring other things into my library or just make space for other things on my shelf. However, I'm totally fine having it on my shelf now because I did really like this book. I just didn't love it. And I don't know that I would revisit it or reread it. So for that reason, I might not always keep it. But it's here for now. And I'm totally fine having it with me. Then there was Conditional Citizens by Leila Lalami. That is a nonfiction book. I did read it. I remember liking it. Again, not enough to hold on to. So I did trade that one in a while ago at this point. So it's gone. Then we have this tiny little edition of A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood, and I did read this. I ended up doing it on audio, although I do find this edition very attractive, if tiny. Um, so I did read it on audio, really liked it, so I'm ha happy to have... This is sort of like the opposite. <laughs> I would reread A Single Man and revisit it. And, you know, I did it on audio the first time. I would reread it in print. And actually, I made a joke about it being tiny, but this is very readable. So that's not actually a strike against it. So this is something that I would probably always keep on my shelf and be happy to have. Then we have Out by Natsuo Kurino. And again, we have hidden the name of the translator. So bear with me a moment. It's translated from the Japanese by Stephen Snyder. I was obsessed with these vintage editions of books. I think they were vintage Japan editions uh, that were released either in January of 2020 or around that time. And I had seen them for the first time. So I, I ordered a couple of them. And this is one. Now, this does take up a fair amount of space. I have heard very wildly mixed opinion about this book in the years since I brought it into my library. I am holding on to it because... Part of me wants to see for myself, although there have been some reviews. Um, Kim at Middle of the Book March hated this book, and a couple of other people have hated it as well. I am going to hold on to it for now. Maybe if I get around to it, I will see if I agree with them or if I fall into the camp of people who like this book. Only time will tell. It is a chunky book. <laughs> so if... A couple of years from now, I haven't read it. It could be in position for an unhaul. But for now, I'm going to hold on to it and see if I can catch up to it and see what I think of it. And then we have The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin, which I actually forgot that I had, had unhauled last year. Um, so it's part of a trilogy. I liked it. I didn't love it. And 
I didn't like the way it ended sort of on a cliffhanger. Like it wants you to immediately go to the next book in the series. And I did not want to do that. And in the years since I read it, I haven't felt like going on to the next book in the series. So I just decided to get rid of it and use the space for something else. N.K. Jemisin seems like a great author. That is, that is the only book of hers that I have read. I am not much of a sci-fi and fantasy reader, so it was always a bit of an ask for me. But um, yeah, I think I also just get attitude about series, and especially when they want you to just binge the series, and I don't. I'm not that type of reader. That's not what I do. Then we have Such a Long Journey by Rohinton Mystery. I had read and loved A Fine Balance by Rohinton Mystery, so I had ordered this because I was planning a buddy read with Sean the Book Maniac and someone else. I actually don't even remember who. I apologize if you're watching. And the, the um, buddy read fell apart. I ended up having surgery to repair an umbilical hernia. Oh, God, I can't talk. <laughs> but yeah, I ended up having surgery. Think Other things happened. And as a result, I haven't gotten around to reading. I have heard mixed things about this book. I don't know when I would get around to it. But I am interested in reading another book by Rohinton Mystery. So I'm going to hold on to it. And maybe at some point, I will get around to reading it. Then there was Cloud Street by Tim Winton. I did read that as a buddy read. I really did not like it. So I returned it. Well, returned it. I traded it in at my local used bookstore pretty immediately after I finished it. I just really was not a fan of that book. I could be persuaded to read something else by Tim Winton, who is a huge author in Australia. I just didn't like that one. Then there is Lonesome Dove, which I uh, got for my Pulitzer Prize project. So actually, technically, I should have taken this one out, but I have read it and it was a success story and I did a whole Pulitzer Prize deep dive about it. I'll link it down below. I read it, even though it's really long. And it's it's a really good book. It reads very easily, even if, um, despite the size. It, it's, it reads very quickly. Now we have three books by Sarah Waters. Tipping the Velvet, which I have not read. Fingersmith, which I did, and I was very mixed on it. And actually, I might even think about trading that one in. And Affinity, which I have not read yet. So I'd probably keep Tipping the Velvet and Affinity. And I have read Fingersmith last year. Um... It was just okay. I didn't love it. So I might even be willing to get rid of Fingersmith. And I feel like I'm a little up and down with Sarah Waters, which is part of why I think if I'm not that into Fingersmith, I should probably just let it go. I know that feels like sacrilege because a lot of people are super into Sarah Waters. That's fine. I just didn't... I've had sort of mixed results so far, but I would like to read Affinity and Tipping the Velvet at some point. I've heard really good things about those. So hopefully I'll get around to them. And then we have Tightrope by Nicholas D. Kristoff and Cheryl Wu Dunn. This was a nonfiction book that I unhauled not long after I got it because I got it because I, I was a member of Book of the Month at the time. And part of why I got rid of my membership is that sometimes I would feel like I needed to use a credit so I would get something that I wasn't all that interested in reading. And this was one of those cases. So all apologies to the authors. <laughs> it's gone from my library right now. So of the 14 books that I brought into my library in January of 2020, I have read eight. That's pretty good. I'll take it. And I've unhauled five. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> overall, let's take a look at how I've done overall with all of the January book hauls we have talked about. So... In the past four Januaries, I brought 29 books into my library. I have read 12 of them, which is 41.4%. And that's roughly on par, on par with uh, the amount of books I've read in my library. I, when I did a bookshelf tour a couple of years ago, I actually counted how many books I had read and how many I had not. And it was just about 50%. So we're 9% under the halfway point, but we're we're getting there. That's pretty good. And I've unhauled nine of those 29 books, which is 31% of the total. Some of those I had read, some of those I had not. I did not do math or statistics on that. So, you know, I'm not going to try to figure it out right now. If you are good at math, you may feel free to figure it out for yourself. But uh, yeah, all in all, I'm pleased with the results from, from my January book hauls. We'll see how I do in February, and if you have comments, thoughts, opinions, recommendations, or anything based on anything I've talked about, let me know in the comments section down below. As always, I really appreciate your time, and I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.